Well, joining us in the studio to talk about the challenges and the opportunities are Kate Henderson, Chief Executive of the Town and Country Planning Association, Rachel North, Director of Communities at West Sussex County Council, and Paul O'Brien, APSI Chief Executive. Well, welcome to you all. Thank you very much indeed for coming in and talking to me today. Um, Paul, let's start with you. The New Policy Institute recently has issued a report really highlighting that there are hard times ahead for frontline services. What's your response to that? My response, Natasha, would be that um, there's already been some hard times um, over the last few years as, as a result of austerity, and I think things are getting worse. Um, we've already seen um, significant cuts to local government expenditure in the UK. By 2020, the UK local government expend will be 30% less than it was in 2010. That's the lowest point as a percentage of GDP since 1948. You're talking about almost 70 years since we've had this level of spend, this low level of spend on local government. Looking at neighbourhood services themselves, uh, that's resulted in a three billion pound reduction in expenditure in England alone. Rachel, let's move on to you as a senior local government officer. How do you feel that councils are genuinely coming to terms with that financial difficulty? You know, our local government has been incredibly agile, inventive and creative about thinking of different ways that it can run its services, that it can share with other organisations, so other parts of the public service, you know, job centres actually being in council offices, so connecting those bits of service together, looking at ways of using digital technology to you know, improve services to customers while reducing some of the costs and being quite entrepreneurial with those okay, ideas. Kate, let's bring in you on this matter. I mean, with your expertise in the field of housing, um, huge cost, obviously, and chronic shortage. The market is failing to meet the needs, in particular, of those at, at the tighter end of the spectrum for people on lower income. And we've lost the real emphasis on, on building social rented homes and, and the funding that that's required from, from nationally. So highlighting all of those issues, there is only a very negative outcome. There isn't. What it leads to is to say that actually if the market isn't going to deliver all of these houses, the private sector play a really important part. Actually, we need other people, other entities, other organisations to start building homes. And local authorities are, are ready to step up. There's already huge innovation. We did a survey of local authorities and over two thirds of them are thinking of or have already set up a local authority housing company, either on their own or in a, in a partnership with others. However, this is just, just the start of a flourishing of, of innovation and there's huge opportunities there. We know that socially mixed and economically mixed communities are far more successful than exclusively poor ones and the role of the local authority in shaping their neighbourhoods and working out the different types of housing, the different tenures of housing and how that's delivered is really important. And Rachel, in the mix of course is the public response to this. In part, does the public just need to lower their expectations about what they are hoping for their local communities? I, I don't think so. I think you know, the public, the community, we are all the community, aren't we? I think it's really important to remember that. And we expect a certain degree of to live in safe places that are warm and healthy and, and have the opportunity for playgrounds for kids to develop and, and learn and libraries to borrow things from and find information from and cultural events that take place and clean streets and, and of course, safe and secure housing. Those things are an expectation of a civilised society. And also, regardless of that, if you don't have some of those things, you end up loading cost in the longer term because you actually don't prevent things happening that become much more vulnerable and have higher costs going into social care and health, you know, mental health and physical health. But I think there is a bit of a paradox that, that exists at a time when expenditure has been cut quite extensively. I think the public are awake now and I think they're becoming more vocal about austerity and that they want things to change a bit. Recent work that we've done with Servation, the opinion pollsters, identified that 77% of the public want to see more money spent at a local level by government rather than at a national level. They trust local councils five times more than they trust government. And in terms of their local councillors, they trust their local councillors eight times more than they trust ministers. I also think that there is a role of, of national government in ensuring that there's a, a level below which 
development doesn't fall below. So actually the role of government in smart regulation, which the, both the public sector and the private sector can innovate above. And that, that's simple things like ensuring that there's enough play spaces near houses that are built, ensuring that the houses are built are big enough that a family could have dinner around a dinner table and not so small that you have to have your food on your lap whilst you're watching TV. And that also means there's a space for kids to do their homework or somewhere to read or have quiet time. And actually without that kind of minimum regulation, or whether it's housing space standards or the requirement to have play spaces or enough GP surgeries in the area, um, actually we're getting some pretty poor development. So we've got a choice here, we're kind of at a crossroads. We can either have government that actually says, yep, we really care about quality in place and we want to enable local government to support their neighbourhoods. Or we say we let the market continue in the way it's going. And actually a, a free market approach on its own is not going to give the best outcomes for our communities. Mm. Local government has got to be at the heart of local communities about delivering a, a, a blueprint, if you like, for the quality of life that society expects. And it's time for local government to stand up and show themselves as community leaders. Well, we thank you all for your expertise today. Thank you. Paul, Rachel and Kate, thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you.